What's going on guys, my name is Ghost and welcome back to another video. So, you started a new character in Dark Souls Remastered, and you need a weapon. Well, you've come to the right place. In this video, I'll show you the top 5 weapons with some bonus ones mixed in that I recommend for new players. I didn't have 10, so I couldn't say top 10, there's like 8 of them, maybe 9, maybe 7, but top 5 sounds better than top 8, so we're gonna go with top 5. Anyways, let's just get right into it. So, for the base 5, I have 2 strength weapons and 2 dex weapons, as well as 1 magic weapon for all you freaks out there that like to cast spells. And let's start off with our first strength weapon. So, from Firelink Shrine, you're just going to want to follow the path that I'm taking on screen. Same thing for all of these methods, just do what I do. I don't really need to explain myself too much, but this one is at the back of the graveyard, where you will find the Zweihander. It's an ultra great sword, an absolute monster, perfect if you're going for a strength build. You can try to get back out of here alive if you want, but uh, it's probably not going to happen. Sorry about that. To get the next strength weapon, you're actually going to have to kill Taurus Demon first. So if you've already done that, great. If not, take the Zweihander and go do it. He's only the second boss in the game, really the first real one. Shouldn't be too difficult. But as soon as you've killed that boss, you'll be dumped out right here on the Hellkite Bridge, at which point you can run down it. About halfway down, you'll see a little gap to the right with some stairs. Go ahead and run down those. Try not to get cooked by the dragon. And you can go right over here, kick down this ladder, and it's a nice little shortcut to your last bonfire. Once you've done that though, go ahead and head back up to the bridge. You can bait the dragon into killing all of the enemies with his fire just by running out onto the bridge and quickly duck back into this little side area here. And if you stand right where I'm standing and wait long enough, the dragon will actually hop down, at which point you're gonna wanna run to the room behind him and on the way pick up this first item, and that is the Claymore, our second strength weapon. Really awesome, a lot more manageable than the Zweihander being that it is a regular greatsword, not an ultra greatsword. You can swing it quite a few more times. It does less damage, but still really solid. Moving on to the dexterity section of this guide. First off, we're going to be going for the Uchi Katana. Now, if you have the Undead Berg Bonfire right here unlocked, it's super easy to get to, but if not, I'll show you from Firelink Shrine. So, again, from Firelink, just follow this path that I'm taking on screen, and you'll get there pretty easily. There's only a few groups of enemies to go by, so it's totally up to you if you want to kill them, or if you just want to run by them and get the weapon first. Either one will work. If you did run past them, I would recommend resting at this bonfire up here. This is the Undead Berg bonfire that I just mentioned. Now that will reset all the enemies, which means you have a few to kill, but not nearly as many as you would have had before. So go ahead and thin the herd here, there's really not too many of them, and then make your way over here where there are two more enemies who have shields and spears. You can hit their shield, which will bait them into attacking, at which point you can just circle around for a backstab, or you can kick their shield out of the way and just attack them that way. Your choice. But then you want to go down these stairs right here, which are blocked by crates, just roll through them, and you'll meet the undead merchant. Now, if you kill him, he will actually drop the sword that we're looking for. Now, before you kill him, I would recommend buying a few things from him first. The short bow is a nice addition, along with 40 to 50 standard arrows. And if you don't have a shield and you want one, I would go for the heater shield that he offers. It has 100% physical protection and uh, pretty pretty nice this early on. If you don't have the Souls Forge, go back, rest of the bonfire, and keep killing the enemies over and over again until you get enough souls. It's really not too many. It shouldn't take you too long. Once you have everything you need from him, though, go ahead and kill him. He is not too hard either. You can take down probably three quarters of his health bar before he even stands up and pulls out his weapon. He'll drop all kinds of stuff that you could have bought from him if you're a sucker, but uh, I'm not, so I just kill him for it. And of course he will drop his sword along with that, the Uchi Katana, a great dexterity weapon, especially this early on in the game. Now for the second dexterity weapon, this one is a little bit more tough to get to, but you still don't have to kill any bosses. So again from Firelink, you want to follow the route that I'm taking on screen. You will need the master key to get to this one, if you want to get it this early. But this route will take you all the way down to Blight Town. You're going to have to make your way all the way to the bottom, so go ahead and just go down each ladder one level at a time. If you get lost, just follow the torches, but you can clearly see what I'm doing on screen, so you probably 
won't get lost. Once you get to this elevator here, wait for one of the platforms to come by. It's kind of confusing. It's like a big wheel thing, not really an elevator, but we're going to use it as an elevator today. And it'll take you down to this little dock thing. Go ahead and dismount the elevator and again, follow where I'm going on screen. There is a bonfire off to our left here, but I would recommend not touching that yet because you're probably not ready to actually clear this area out, which means once you get this next weapon, you're going to want to die and go back to Firelink rather than right there. It'll just be a lot easier on you. Now I like to go up these two ladders right here just to be able to circle around behind the enemies rather than pushing through them or around them with brute force. So I would recommend doing the same and then you can just easily drop back down right behind where they were. This guy with the blow darts, kind of a clown. I like to hit him with my sword a couple times just so he knows who's boss. But uh, the item that you're looking for is right here and it will give you the falchion and the wanderer's armor set which is a nice little bonus. After this, don't let the blow dart guy win. Don't let the mosquitoes win. Don't let any of the enemies win. You either don't die or you die by your hand. I'm gonna go with option two. Now weapon number five again is for you sorcerers out there. So it's actually down in Blighttown again. I'm not gonna show you how to get there from Firelink because I just did. So I'll start from right here at the top. You can get to this area just by going down the ladders one level at a time, but if you watch closely you can actually skip some of that and get right to the item you need. You'll find a corpse sitting here with the tin banishment catalyst and a nice set of crimson robes. Also in the chest right next to it, there's a sorcery. Nice little bonus for you. See, I didn't leave you magic guys hanging. I got you a weapon, I got you some armor, and a sorcery. You're welcome. So those are the main five, definitely the most straightforward and simple to get, except maybe the falchion, but you can you can forgive me for that because if you let hold on, let me just pause real quick. If you're ever invaded by anyone or if you ever want to PvP, go ahead, equip the falchion, hold it with two hands, and press R1 ten times in a row, I guarantee the enemy will die. Just just try it on any player. Just this this easy combo I'm putting on screen right now. So simple, guaranteed victory every time. If you do it right, you'll probably get a nasty message afterwards too, which is nice because, you know, sometimes it's fun to read. So that brings us to the bonus section. I didn't include these in the original top five because they can be a little tricky to get and even impossible. I'll explain in a moment. The first one is actually really easy. It's called the Drake Sword. It's basically the stereotypical noob weapon. Don't let anyone bully you for using it. They're just mad because it's way better than their weapon, especially at this point in the game. Later on, not so much, but in the early areas, you're just going to one-shot everything. So to get this, you're going to want a bow and some arrows. That's why I told you to get that earlier from the Undead Merchant. Now, depending on what arrows you use, this might take like 15 arrows, this might take like 30. Um, also, depending on your aim, it might take like 50, which is why it's better to be safe than sorry and get all the arrows you can before you kill the merchant. So, I usually go with around 40, I it's never taken more than 30, but arrows are always nice. Go directly under the dragon and stand in the spot I'm at right now. Then, you want to aim at this little notch at the top of the castle wall right next to the dragon's tail. So time for a quick lesson in Dark Souls bow mechanics. Lesson one, the reticle is not centered. You always want to aim slightly to the left of what you're trying to hit. This is a special case though because I promise if you aim at that notch in the wall it'll work perfectly. Also, arrows are not bullets, they don't travel all that fast. So you want to kind of pre-fire this a little bit, anticipate it, it'll take a second to get the timing down, but what I like to do is basically just watch the tail as it comes to the left, as soon as it starts moving to the right, there's like this little hitch where it pauses and then it starts moving to the right. Right after that little hitch, that's when I like to fire my arrow. And the reason that we are aiming at that notch in the wall is because when you hit the dragon's tail, the dragon won't like it very much and he'll drop down from his perch and land on the bridge. When he does that, his tail will hang off the bridge, literally right in front of your face. So again, get the timing down and you can actually hit it right here too. You have to be a lot quicker this time obviously, but you can basically get two shots in. Just keep doing this and eventually you will cut off the tail and get the Drake Sword. There is one other way to do this. You can actually do what we did earlier and bait the dragon to hop down. If you buff your weapon with gold pine resin, it'll take three swings 
at the dragon's tail to just cut it off with that weapon. It is a bit more dangerous and it costs a gold pine resin, so I would really recommend doing it this way since there's literally zero risk involved. Make sure to watch till the end of this video, I'll show you the movesets for each weapon. The Drake Sword's got a really cool feature to it. The next weapon that's really nice for starters is any of the Black Knight weapons. Now, these are a little tough because Black Knights on their own are really strong and really scary. But on top of that, they only have a 20% chance to drop their weapon and they don't respawn. So you really only have one go at it. If you're really, really set on getting a Black Knight weapon, there's a specific one you want, you might have to reset the game, make a new character a few different times. But there is one thing that you can do to help improve your drop chances. If you look at that counter in the top left corner of my screen next to my health and stamina, every single number there will actually increase your item discovery rate, all the way up to 10 where it caps out. I don't know the exact correlation off the top of my head, so I'll just put a chart on screen right now. Now there are actually three Black Knights super early in the game, each one with a different type of weapon, and I'll show you where each one of those is right now. The first one... You might have already found it's right before Taurus Demon. Really easy to get to from the Undead Bird Bonfire. Again, I would recommend killing the enemies on the way there. Otherwise, you're going to have some friends cheering you on while you try to kill him. But this one just has the regular Black Knight Longsword or Black Knight Sword. I'm not really sure which. And again, he has a 20% chance to drop it. The next one is right here. If you got the bonfire under the Hellkite Drake, it's super easy to get to, if not you can just cross the bridge by baiting the dragon down like I've showed you several times already. Literally just exit this room, kill this first enemy, and then turn around and go up this tower. If you walk slowly and you don't have very loud armor, aka armor made of metal, sounds like loose change with every step that you take, you can actually sneak up on the Black Knight and get a nice little backstab off to start the fight. If not though, he's really not too hard if you have your parry timings down, and the Black Knights in general are really easy to backstab. Do be aware though that his greatsword has extremely good tracking, so uh, don't roll too early. This one of course has a 20% chance to drop the Black Knight greatsword. Lastly we have the Halberd Knight. Now this one you're going to want to go from the Undead Parish Bonfire and head into Darkroot Forest. Go ahead and take a right at the first available spot and literally just go down this cliffside winding all the way to the very bottom. If you don't find the Black Knight, he'll find you. And this one has a 20% chance to drop the Black Knight Halberd, one of my personal favorite weapons in this game. Very very good, not necessarily better than the other two, I just like it a lot. Now unfortunately I was not lucky enough to get any of the Black Knight weapons so I don't have any clips of me using them, but of course I did get the Black Knight shield from one of them which only has a 5% chance to drop. I guess that makes sense. I really did try though, I made 3 different characters and killed all of them on every single one. But you'll just have to take my word for it. And the final weapon that I have today is called the Balder Side Sword. While all of the Black Knight weapons are really focused on strength builds for the most part, this one, in my opinion, is hands down the best dexterity weapon in the game. And while it's pretty difficult to do at this point in the game, you can get it right now. If you've been to the Undead Parish, you probably met these guys called Balder Knights. Some of them have small shields called bucklers, and they're wielding rapiers. We don't really care about them. The ones with the bigger shields, the kite shields, are holding a weapon called the Balder Side Sword. Now, what's really special about it is it has a forward thrust attack, just like a rapier, but it also has sweeping, slashing attacks like the long sword. So it has a very, very versatile move set. It's also really long. It has more range than the long sword, which basically just makes it superior in every way. Now it's fairly straightforward to get it, all you have to do is kill these Balder Knights that are holding it. Problem is it only has a 1% drop rate. So if you don't have any humanity stocked up, you might be here for a while. 
but if you're using a dexterity build, like I said, definitely worth the grind. You can get it later on in the game, there are Balder Knights down the road, and you can get a ring that will also boost your item discovery rate. It's a lot easier to do then, but I thought I would let you know now. So now that I've shown you where to get all these weapons, I'm going to show you the movesets for each one. I'll just have it playing in the background, I'll show you what every single move does. So starting out with this Y-Hander, I don't actually have the strength to wield it, as you can see by that red X down on my HUD, and also the fact that this Y-Hander is swinging me more than I'm swinging it. So there's actually a very helpful mechanic in this game, especially for strength characters. Some strength weapons take something absurd, like 50 strength to wield. So what you can do actually is two-hand the weapon, which will increase your effective strength by 50%. So that means if I have a character with 16 strength, like this one here, add 50% to that, that's eight more, it gets me to 24 strength, and that just so happens to be the minimum requirement for the Zweihander. Not to mention, I kind of feel like the Zweihander really shines with the two-handed moveset more so than the one-handed. So for the light attacks, you have these really wide sweeps, really nice for hitting multiple enemies at once. But the bread and butter of the Zweihander is a two-handed heavy attack. It's an overhead crush that will literally pancake 90% of enemies in the game. I'm not exaggerating when I say you can go through this entire game by only pressing the right trigger with the Zweihander equipped. It's extremely powerful. So, moving on to the Claymore, while the Zweihander was an ultra greatsword class weapon, this is just a regular greatsword, meaning it's a bit smaller and much easier to manage. So, as you can see, the one-handed attacks, same thing, just easy left and right sweeps that are pretty good for taking out multiple enemies at once if you're being surrounded. The one-handed heavy attack, though, is probably my favorite part about this weapon. It's a really good thrusting attack has really nice range to it and it's really good for keeping some distance between you and your opponent. While I definitely prefer the two-handed moveset for the Zweihander, I think the one-handed moveset for the Claymore actually outclasses the two-hand. The two-handed moveset, it's a lot more compact and I feel like it's actually just much less functional, but it's still got some really good crowd control capability. Moving on to the dexterity weapons, we're going to start off with the Uchigatana. Now, the Uchigatana moveset is actually really nice. Both the one and two handed light attacks are these really compact vertical sweeps. Actually pretty handy to be honest. Now you won't be hitting multiple enemies with these like you would with the longsword. However, you also won't be running into that problem where you go to attack and you accidentally hit a wall next to you because these are so compact and they don't really go side to side too much. Now my favorite part about the Uchi Katana is this one handed heavy attack really really long distance thrusting attack. The Uchi Katana also has this move with the running attack and the back step. Very very nice. I would highly highly recommend using that whenever possible. Lastly we've got the Falchion. Now this as I said earlier is really really good for PvP. People won't like you very much if you use it though because you're pretty much just going to be spamming the two-handed light attack. The one-handed light attack and the two-handed light attack are essentially the same thing. It feels a lot like a longsword, but quite a bit faster. And if you look on screen, I'm taking massive steps forward between every single swing, which means your opponent's not going to have very much room to breathe. Also, if you watch my stamina bar, I can swing this quite a bit. I haven't actually upgraded my stamina at all yet in this playthrough and I can still swing it about six times. As for the heavy attacks, both one-handed and two-handed, they seem more for show, they're not all that functional. Very compact and take a lot more stamina, so even if your enemy does have a lot of health, I would recommend just backing off, letting your stamina recharge, and getting back in there with some more light attacks. As for the catalyst, really not a whole lot to say, it's mostly used for casting spells but it does have the feature where if you use the heavy attack on you can poke enemies and it actually does quite a bit of damage at this stage in the game not so much later on but early on it does save you that extra weapon slot so if you did run out of spells you don't actually have to switch to a sword or worry about carrying one on you at all times as for those bonus weapons as i mentioned earlier i was not very lucky with the drops so all i have footage of is the drake sword but the clips i got are pretty good now, as for the moveset, it's basically just a standard longsword except for the two-handed heavy attack. There are a few dragon weapons in this game, and with all of them, they have a hidden power that you can unlock by using the two-handed heavy attack. The drake swords, you can see right here. Now, it basically sends a shockwave straight in front of you about 20 to 30 feet, and it will hit multiple enemies. 
There are a couple of downsides though. The first regarding the special move, every time you use it, it will reduce your durability by 30. The Drake Sword has 360 durability to begin with, which means that if you have a fully repaired weapon, you can use this 12 times before it'll break. Quite a few, but you do want to be careful. You can take the weapon to a blacksmith at any time and repair it, but don't let it break. The other downside has to do with upgrading it, and it's actually a pretty big issue. So. Any of the dragon weapons will take dragon scales to upgrade, which are pretty rare, they're pretty hard to come by, and they don't honestly help the drake sword out very much, especially compared to some of the other dragon weapons. So I would really recommend just finding a different weapon to use once this one starts feeling a bit weak in the game, you feel like you're not doing all that much damage, because once you find another dragon weapon, it'll serve you a lot better and you'll want those dragon scales to upgrade it. But guys, that's all I have for today. I do apologize this video ended up going on quite a bit longer than I intended, but I wanted to share quite a bit of information with you. I could have just showed you on screen where to get each weapon and not shown you the moveset or any tips about it, but I didn't really want that to be what this video was all about. So if you enjoyed it, make sure to hit that like button. Let me know in the comments if there's other guides that you want to see similar to this. I have another one coming in the very near future, either later today or tomorrow. So look forward to that. And with that, guys, I don't have too much else to say. So take care, and I'll see you in the next one.